If you want to support the channel, check out my book in the description below. Also linked in the description below, Tiny House Summer Camp, year number 11, I think, is happening up in Vermont, camping included. It's always an awesome time, hands-on building. Check out the link down below. All right, here's the one we're looking at today, just to show you. Pick the smallest one out of them, because no one seems to do that. And the question is, the starters, is it worth that? So it's like 19 degrees out, and I decided, let's film a video at Home Depot. <laughs> what a stupid idea, as people in the parking lot are staring at me. What's up, Deke? RelaxShacks.com. I see a lot of videos out there. I've put a couple of them out there as well, informationally and just aesthetically, to check out some sheds that potentially could be converted into tiny houses. And one thing I don't see, I always see the extravagant giant sheds with the gambrels, two stories, flying buttresses, all the additions, this, that, and the other thing. One thing I don't see is a look at the smaller, more affordable quote-unquote sheds, such as this one behind me, although affordable is uh, something that could be debatable. So let's check this one out. So this particular one is eight by 12. The easy way to figure that out is to look at the plywood sheets in the floor. Plywood's four by eight. Just do the math as you count them. Look at the half sheets, the full sheets. It's eight by 12. Uh, excuse me, no, 10 by 12. <laughs> After all that talk, it's 10 by 12. I sometimes deceive myself. Uh, giving you 120 square feet. And while most of the sheds I see are kind of cheap bows built with two by threes, Dimensional lumber, this one's built with two by fours, which is what I'd like to see. Although what you're always getting up here is a little metal gusset work on the ceiling, which in snow country, I mean, it's, yeah, it's gonna hold, but I still find it kind of questionable. I would put some actual gussets or collar ties, collar ties being the triangulation you often see in attics and homes, giving you strength, the strongest shape of construction, a triangle. Uh, so I would add those potentially. The problem is when you add them, let me look up here again, is you're going to lose some headroom if you want to try to sneak in what I call a half or a mini or semi loft. I'll flip the camera to show you more. So as you look around, you can see there is a decent amount of headspace in here. I mean, this is built to be like a backyard shed workshop. That, if I had to guess, is nine feet in height, maybe eight and a half. So what I mentioned half lofts, See, I have this workbench here. If you were to raise that up a little higher and build a loft where you put a bed platform, uh, unfortunately cutting off that window, which you might have to relocate, that's something you want to plan. Maybe put a window there instead. You can kind of customize or alter these kits pretty easily. And that's something that's inherent in doing a shed conversion, insulating, sheathing the walls. But you could build almost a half loft here, giving you some semi-usable space down here below, we could pop in a couch, let's say. I mean, this again is extremely small. We're talking, like I said, 120 square feet. I have seen smaller though in terms of conversions. Uh, is a door this wide necessary? No, I would reduce the size of that because you're not apt to bring in anything that's too large that necessitates a door that wide. So by cutting it down, you get more wall space, which is more storage space, more insulation and so forth. Uh, they have the vents in here. Again, I would add some collar ties potentially and uh, these big expanses of walls, which are, which are nice, uh, you'd have to pop in a couple windows. Don't get carried away with it, because the more windows you pop in, the less wall space you have, the less insulation you have, the less structural rigidity you have. And it all adds up or adds down, if that makes any sense, over time. I like the way this one's built, you know, frame just to give you a shot. I'm getting a lot of glare from these windows. But you can see the jack studs and such, the headers. I've seen a lot of sheds. That just stink. This one's built by Tough Shed. You can grab the brochure as when you see these at Home Depot. And here's a kind of a cool plot overlook at it. Now the question becomes, as I stand here freezing my badoinkas off <laughs> here in New England, is what can you do with such a small space? So I'm going to my sketch pad to show you at least an idea or two in terms of converting something like this into a usable or potentially usable, livable, vacationable space. Let's do it. All right, here we go, real time. Uh, a lot of people don't know I have, uh, I do a lot of artwork. This will be a poor indication of it. But you can check out my Instagram page. It's Deke Diedrichson Art. Of course, this marker's kind of running out. We'll make do. Here is our uh, shed. Again, it's uh, 10, 12. Entrance was here. And if I had to guesstimate, I think the door was close to four feet. Let's call it 40 inches. First thing I would do is this door here. I would minimize it, shrink it thereby giving us more 
wall space here. There was an existing window here, which is going to be in the way of where I would like to put that half loft right here. Uh, that loft would be four feet, uh, six inches maybe off the ground. By doing so, you can't really live or hang out as much underneath that, but you still have four feet and change up above for sleeping, for sitting up, for reading, but down below, and I'll kind of draw where it would be, this is where you put your futon, your couch, whatever, your sitting space. The only downside of this is when you're kind of going backwards to sit down to the couch, you got to watch yourself so you don't chop the back of your head in that loft, which I might pad the edge of it. Uh, of course, the loft up above, by having a little ladder to ascend up to it, you have a ton of sitting space up there on a mattress to watch a TV. I would put all my entertainment stuff, even though it's kind of weird as you enter the room, enter the door, uh, through the door, I put it on this end, so any viewing takes you in this direction. Um, so you have sleeping space settled. Um, heating element could be something as simple as one of those NV heaters or, you know, a little Dickinson stove, something on the small side of things. I would utilize the space back here and make a long, thin, almost Pullman-style kitchen. Pullman-style kitchens are basically almost like the kitchens or laneway kitchens you would see modeled after early trains, small hotels. Uh, this is where you could have your sink and such you know, shelving up above, tons of storage down under it with open shelving. I like the idea of the open shelving, that concept. And I would, there was no window in the back of this, I would install by the sink one big window for natural light here. So you have a view, it opens things up, makes things feel a little less claustrophobic, and uh, you have all that natural light in there as well. So food prep area, sleep area, entrance, you know, TV, entertainment area over here. If this were to the side, I might, and this is kind of odd, squeak in a tiny doorway, uh, do I, do I can't talk, doorway here, just to show you that this is live and off the cuff. And if I were to add to this, what I would do is make a combo bathroom kind of greenhouse area, thereby in the winter gaining, you know, if this was all glass, passive solar heat, so you could open this door and that heat would filter in here, uh, a space for your composting toilet, uh, you could grow plants, it's additional storage and such. If you didn't add on an area that was three or four feet bumped out that way, uh, again, giving you, like I said, the key is more living space, more storage, and the bathroom's not hogging up this little block of space here. I would consider moving this TV area down, sacrificing some of this counter space here. Let's say this comes out, if this is 10 feet, let's say this comes out two feet, which is pretty ample for something that runs like eight feet long, and build out the most minimal nautical style bathroom right here that being a wet bath the whole room is waterproof so when you close it you can shower in there uh you know go to the bathroom uh of course a little for natural ventilation a little window or a fan to blow the funk out of there and um just keep it as small as possible not glamorous i know it's kind of rough but anything you're building in the space visually this corner butting out right here you're starting to chop in the space more and more so you're 12 feet by 10 feet you're very limited but it is doable for a single sleeper up here you can go out five feet but that takes up almost half the room if you want your loft to be able to sleep too which i can see many people wanting but then again are two of you going to be living in 120 uh, square feet this could be a seasonal cabin it could be lived in full time perhaps you could add your insulation um, storage up above in the eaves Maybe even, you know, if you're building some from scratch, build a little bit taller. Those sidewalls, if they're six feet or so, make them eight. Make the peak a little bit higher. More loft space. Um, you know, that verticality, if you will. Uh, just keeping it really, really simple. This is the cheater add-on, like I said, the greenhouse over here. This, maybe three by three feet, feet three by four feet. It really gobbles at the, up that room, though. So you have to decide where you want to put that, because as you walk in here... That's one of the first things you're going to see, and it really visually obstructs and blocks a lot of what was an open space. So you got to be very careful with that, with small spaces. The smaller the space, the more challenging things are. Um, I might go so far, actually, I'm, I'm saying putting a futon here, nix that. Do a little built-in down below that comes up about a foot, foot and a half off the ground. Make that lift up. Tons and tons and tons of coffin-side storage underneath. Put it on uh, pneumatic, you know, hydraulic lifts hinges and such, uh, like the trunk of a car so that you can lift it up easily to access your clothes and all that because you want storage in here as well. Aside from the storage you would have under this kitchen area, this huge, huge long counter and you know some of the wall space you could use up 
for storage as well. So there's kind of the idea right there. Um, feel free in the comments to leave your ideas as well. I'd love to hear from you uh, because everyone has different opinions and this kind of stuff. Yeah, not for everybody, but it could be doable. And I figured for a change, I would take the smallest shed I found at that particular Home Depot, not counting the arrow sheds or the Rubbermaid ones because those are just junk and way, way, way too small and see what we could come up with. And there you go. So there you go, a couple ideas of ideas, ideas, as they say in Rhode Island. Uh, my name's Deke, again, RelaxShacks.com. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments down below, I'm sure you have some, some input, some constructive criticism. I'm cool with that. Leave them down below. Hit that little bell for notifications if you want to know when we have more videos. Hit the like button, of course, and thank you for watching as always. Take care.